Now I did find another traditional custom that was in the pile of stuff I got. It was uh, hiding on the bottom. I'll just show that quick. Again, really cool. But uh, what I really want to show you is this. Now check these out. Popular Science Magazines. John had a few of these. Uh, sadly, I can't back the camera up a little more. But look at that. May 1951. And look at how good of shape this is. An article here, How Good Are the Little Cars? So there's your Henry J down below, your Nash, and an Austin, looks like. Austin A10. Is that right? And then of course, being popular science, they've got all the other stuff, but these things are cool. I love popular science, popular mechanics back in the day. I wish they still had these magazines. But I think the reason why they stopped, according to one of the... I think it was my high school teacher, one of them, told me, is that none of these things that are in here um, are, you know, safe. <laughs> well... I mean, that's a relative word. But, I mean, if you're building a door, that's going to be safe, of course. But, um, no, I think what I'm trying to say is that uh, um, if somebody... Okay, so you got, like, these blueprints to these projects, right? And I think what was happening is, in here you've got the blueprints, and this is from back in a time when people had to build stuff for themselves, right? So a lot of people understood this, what it meant. You know, I'm going to build a project, it's going to involve nails or whatever, and I might get hurt, or a chemical, or something like that, right? And people back in this time period were cool with that, and they didn't. it didn't matter. But I think what happened is, later on in time, People were getting injured by building some of this stuff in here, or whatever they built would, you know, if they didn't do it right, it would fall apart. Um, so, <laughs> they would sue the magazine for uh, them getting hurt. And I think that's what killed these things, according to that teacher, anyway, that told me that's what ended them. But look at this. This is the Marmon Wasp the winner of the 1911 Indianapolis 500. And, uh, oh, this is cool. This article is about the guy that took these pictures. I cover the races. A veteran tells you how the Memorial Day Classic is photographed. And back in the day, they used to use a fisheye lens. And that's what gave these cars that um, oval tires that faced forward and gave you the sense that it was whipping by at real high speeds and all that stuff. This is cool. I, I can't wait to read this article. Look at that. The guy's going by and the car's crashed in the background with the smoke coming out of it. This guy's lost his tire. It's shooting up in the <laughs> down there. It's really cool photography. Again, neat stuff in these. How to make a wheelbarrow. Flower, flower barrel dress up your garden. All this stuff, man. This is why if you find a collection of these books, just grab it. Don't <laughs> don't stop. Don't hesitate. Don't care what's in it. Grab it. Bring it home. Read the heck out of them because they are awesome. Look at all these lights in here. This is world's biggest TV studio back in uh, 51. Really early TV. Look at, they give you the blueprint of the room, the studio. But look at all the lights up in the rafters. Like, wow. <laughs> Scientific torture makes your home safer. <laughs> little kid hitting the... He's watching baseball on TV and he's batting the TV. Oh, that would be an instant... Uh, <laughs> instant grounding back in the day. Hey, what's this thing? How a gas... Uh, yeah, how a gas pump works. See, they had all this stuff back in the day. They tell you how to do it. My, I got inherited stuff from my dad. Hey, here's the model railroad. It's only a dream, but if if cooperation amongst hobbyists could build railroad heaven, admissions from spectators might cover upkeep. Wait, is this talking about how to build a museum? What is this? Model fans plan their dream railroad. Ooh, man. 
How chemists can cut liquids with a knife. Yeah, that's what I mean. If you find these out there, guys and girls and everybody that's watching this channel, grab them. Just grab them. Give whoever how much money they want for them or whatever it is. Grab them. <laughs> okay, here's another one from September. So this is a few months later. What color TV does? What color does to to TV? I should put my reading glasses on. There's again the Munts car. There's a Jaguar. Uh, a, what is this? An ash again or something? It looks like a bathtub and ash. Unfortunately, the back got a little ripped. But again, really cool stuff in here. Plastic wood article on your house. Champion spark plug ads for you guys that are wanting to put something in your diorama. Color film cues. Unfortunately, a couple of pages got stuck together. Concrete incinerator made in two molds. Yeah, just wicked stuff. Protect your car's body. Oh, this was an issue that my uncle was talking about with these cars because he was telling a story about I forget which car it was one of his friends I think but back in the day all these bumpers and everything were different heights there wasn't a universal so my uncle was saying that ah, somebody backed into a 57 Chevy with the Dag Mar bumpers like the ones that stuck out <laughs> When they pulled the car away, the Dagmars had punched two circles right into the guy's rear or grill or something. A rear bumper, something like that. Because the, the other guy's car was lower. <laughs> so the rubber bumpers, the Dagmars were supposed to be rubber bumpers. And um, they didn't bump, they just punched into the other guy's sheet metal. <laughs> Here's how to buy a house. The checklist of everything. Man, how color TV works. Race car. What is this? Testing tires or? Everybody bounces off everybody else. Story about uh, circle track racing. Here's how a, a, a gun works. <laughs> More model train, model work stuff. These streamliner trains somebody built. Those are cool. There's so much in these books. Wait, what is that? Sorry, I'm going really big in this video here. <laughs> Look at this bridge. Lifts up in the center, drops down. Fancy footbridge rises 80 feet. Can you imagine? Imagine being up there when it <laughs> goes up. Help me. Here's hints. Wax paper disc laid on top of leftover paint will seal out air and prevent skin formation. Ooh, I gotta try that. To wash a soiled clothes, clothes line, wrap it around the agitator of the washing machine. Tuck the ends in securely so that the line won't get all tangled up. Huh. That's a new hack. It's gonna be on. Here's a hack to make sure your clothes line I don't know how many people use clothesline. Ah, oh, yeah, just fantastic stuff. 1951. Here's 1954, featuring the 55 Pontiac. Look at the artwork on there. I love this stuff. Again, really neat what's inside here. Whoa. Look at this cutter. Craftsman Molding Cutter Set. Look at all the blades on that. I don't know if that rotates. Maybe. Yeah, it must. It must be for their, one of their saws or something. God, look at that. Imagine getting hit with that thing. Ow. <laughs> Crazy. Look at all this. Delta Shop. Hey, us model builders could use that. That's got a drill press on it. It's got a... A uh, sanding disc. It looks like it might even have a table saw thing underneath there. Unless it's all separate parts. Just Oh, maybe... Yeah. No, I don't know. Is it one piece? 
or is it separate? I don't know. Anyway, it looks cool <laughs> how the artist drew it. There's garage door bumpers. Hey, my dad's got a soldering iron like that. It's got two little light bulbs on the side. Lionel train ad. Dewalt tools. Texco tips on how to take care of your car. Shopping for tools. How to cut dovetail joints. I could use that. There's a lighthouse. Photography tricks. These things had tons of them. Darkroom stuff back in the day. 35 mil. There's how to make Christmas stuff. Uh, dollhouse turntable. Some furniture back in the day. It's sad though. My dad had a whole bunch of these springs. And at the time we thought, ah, oh, who's going to build a chair after he passed away? So my sister ended up throwing them out. And now it's like, hmm... Everything comes, but sometimes it comes at the wrong time. And Oh, here's your air intakes for your different manifolds. I'm sure you model car guys would like that. Look at the cross one. That's cool. And the exhaust. Now, this is interesting. Buick Chrysler, DeSoto, Lincoln, Dodge, Ford, Mercury. They have individual exhausts going off of all cylinders, but then they tie them together and make the one side go right through the other side. Like, how inefficient, right? <laughs> oh, boy. There's the valves. Different ways the valves are all uh, linked up in your, to open and close. The connecting rods. Again, lots of cool stuff in here. There's a little gnash. Oh, what are these boys doing? Right there. Young technicians build accurate models of television equipment. Oh, they made the, a little model kit of a uh, television studio. That's neat. Good for them. Now they're all 80-year-old men. <laughs> That's the only downside to these books. Maybe even older. Holy... No, they couldn't be, because, uh, yeah, John was born in this vintage, and he was seven in his 70s. But yeah, these kids are older than him, so yeah, they would be 80 to 90 year old men. God, how time flies. Look at how vibrant the colors are on these things. Science and Mechanic book, and then look at how thick they are, too. Remember, these were also served as catalogs for parts, so... An advertisement. So a good majority of the book is ads. Well, I'm really going in on this. We're only like 15 minutes just to this. But anyway, yeah, look at all that stuff. TVs, boats, how to make boats, how to do this, how to do that, how to make lapel pins. Stuff for the kids. Look at this moving van. Gives you blueprints on that too. Carve it up out of the wood. Pool toy. Even all the furniture. How to make your furniture. That'd be good for uh, 25th scale dioramas. Build a billiard table. Teach your kid how to be Jackie Gleason. <laughs> in, um, ah, what's the name of that movie? You know the one where Jackie Gleason is uh, playing pool against uh, the other guy. And they have the big, uh, the big bet. Okay, here's the last one. Oh, what's this? That's interesting. Looks like a mirror or something. Okay, I better keep that. Oh, maybe, ooh, maybe that came off the Texaco station. Looks like a lamp. Anyway, popular science. How to build a hot rod. How, the, how to make your hot rod safe. Electric car. There we go for boys. Wonder if uh, Elon Musk got inspired from this one. <laughs> I don't know. Look at that motorbike. What is that one? It's a Harley. Harley Davidson Hydroglide. From 1952. Just cool stuff. Like I say, if you find these anywhere, buy them. Don't ask questions. <laughs> Look at pint sized Dynaflows run home machines. Look at this thing. Look at that engine in the back. Sucked out of a lawnmower. 
<laughs> man. Ah, yeah. A seven ounce radio you can build at seven ounce. I mean, you, nobody's going to build this now, but it's still, there's all the schematics and everything. It's still cool stuff, though. Look at that. Here's a, uh, what is this? Photographing baseball games, how to get all the action and everything, where to sit, different locations, in the football seating areas. Look at that, and the bleachers. Oh, is this how to weld? See, this, like, this is what I mean, yeah. Fillet welds. Like, this magazine had everything in it. There's, now this is cool. I saw this. This is, uh, I've got this lawnmower. It's a 1925 ball bearing lawnmower. And here, the, this guy is taking the blades out. He's replacing them with brushes. I'm like, why, why brushes? What's going on? Here's how to make the new rig. It's like, what is that for? So then I flip back. Broom on wheels sweeps your lawn. He's turned his lawnmower, 1925 lawnmower, into a thing to go across leaves and sweep the leaves up into this bucket. So I'm going to I'm going to try adapting this onto a plastic lawnmower. There's no way I'm going to uh going to wreck my grandfather's lawnmower <laughs> that I inherited. But yeah, I'll I'll turn that plastic one into a leaf sweeper. That is <laughs> cool stuff. Look at the cabinets, make them out of pegboard. Hints from the model garage. What is this? Channeling rear air out outlets. Okay. Get the air out of your car to flow through your car so it's not stuffy in there. Try doing that on your Toyota. <laughs> Hi-fi speakers. Just awesome stuff. Hot rod stuff. French airplanes. Jet power. Ideas from inventors, how to hide your spare tire up under your car, make it easy, make a hinge system under there, drop the hinge and your tire falls out so you don't have to... Look at this Alfa Romeo. New flying disc car knocks off 155 miles an hour in the early 50s, just with the shape of this thing. I wonder though if it would lift the car up as you drove. Look, here's how ma ma magician does the floating coffin trick. Like, just anything you want to learn in here is in here. Like, that's what I mean. If you find these, buy them. So anyway, that's the collection I got for those. Unfortunately, John didn't have more. But, um, yeah. So there it is. Let's look at some models now. Alright, this kit I got two of. And one of them... No, the other one I got is actually part of uh, John's basement flood and there is some mold in here so I'm going to have to be careful when I open it but I got these two because I wanted to build them one of them with the styline parts so I'll put the musty one down there okay so again a really cool kit this is the 61 Ford Galaxy model and I have seen um, model car minion built one and it is really simple but this is the reason why you get the kit, is for all these cool custom parts. So yeah, look for this one coming in an unboxing video and future build videos. Alright, so next up I picked up a pair of these 1957 Ford kits from Ravel. And this is a 2-in-1, maybe a 3-in-1. Oh, this price tag is in the way. Ah, I can't get it. Maybe it, oh, it says on the side. It's a two-in-one. So you can build it as factory stock or as the racing. And uh, I wanted to build get these Fords because AMT, of course, has the one with the opening doors and it's more high-end. I think it's a, it's a full Fairlane, right? Ford Fairlane. Full on Fairlane. This one is a custom, so it's got the different trim. This is sort of Ford's equivalent of uh, the Chevy 150. So I thought that was cool. Look at the neat thing. So get your choice of uh, dual carbs or a single carburetor. Those cool M&H slicks on there. And then the Ford dog dish hubcap. 
as well as the plain Jane front end. Really cool, and I can't wait to give this one a try. And of course, if you get one Ravel 57 Ford, you need to get the other one. And this one has the option of building the police wagon. Sort of like a Ed Wood film. Remember in the old horror movies of the 50s, the B ones, they always had like one of these cars coming up. Even uh, Thunder Road, I think, has these in them. But yeah, the police parts are pretty cool. It'd actually be neat to build a complete police force with the three 57 Fords. The, um, of course, this one, the one I just showed, and the one from AMT. But then, of course, the regular Del Rio Ranch wagon is pretty cool. Actually, I've got another 57 Ford. I just re kind of realized there's been a lot going on. Look at the sirens on here. That's cool. And then under the hood, that looks like the AMT kit again. But yeah, this one should be cool. Look for the what's in the box. Could have a whole series of 57 Fords there. Here's the other 57 Ford that I just realized was a 57 Ford. <laughs> I don't know where my head was at. But this is the Ravel 57 Ford Ranchero. Now, um, there it is on the side. The cool features. This is an earlier model kit from Ravel. It's got the moon hubcaps on there. I don't know if you can build this thing stock. I kind of doubt it. But this is a mixed bag. Um, John Harry's had a few mixed bags up there. And it is interesting. I'm going to First time I actually got a chance to look at this. Ooh, is it ever dirty? Just have this as a diorama <laughs> on its own. Just pull it out of the box, find the wheel. The wheel! Look, at it does look like the AMT underneath. But, of course, it's not, right? It's got the extra bit in the back. Okay, so there's one in here. Unfortunately, no instructions. Maybe I'll try to find those. Some very skinny tires. Look at how narrow those are. I wonder if those are from a Model T by mistake. Oh, is it chop windshield? Oh, it is too. Okay, so this is a not build it stock. Look at that. Okay, so we got a second body in here. <laughs> and we got a third body in here. Oh, cool. I want to do some rust effect things. I could just go straight off this uh, brown body. Okay, yeah, uh, maybe I might have got a nightmare. At least there's three hoods. <laughs> so maybe I can build one out of this. Oh, it's interesting anyway. Some chrome parts trees, extra grill. One of the AMT trophies from the trophy kit. Bent. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so a lot of interesting things out of this. Now this is another interesting 1957 car, but it's not a Ford this time. This is something that was in a corner that my friend James just happened to see, and uh, he bought it for me. But look at this. Have you guys ever seen this? Or know what it's about? Let me know in the comments down below. It's obviously a promotional. <laughs> it's got a really wicked bend in the front end here. Um, my friend Roy said I could just put this in warm water and then stick it into cold water and it should uh, pull everything back into shape. I don't know. But it's a 57 Chevy four-door wagon. And look at that. Actually, you know what? Even if I don't try to attempt to fix this thing, at least I have the dimensions of the doors because I was trying to make a four-door. Um, a sedan. So I can go off of these if I decide I don't want to risk trying to, you know, bend up this front fender. And I think this plastic, if I remember right on these promos, wasn't it an acetone or something? Type of plastic? I know originally they used something bizarre and then they went to styrene. And I think this is that bizarre plastic. But, I mean, hopefully I can put AMT parts on this. I have no idea. So if you guys know what this is about, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, let's carry on with some kits.
Now just to switch the pace a little bit, here is a Vampirella kit that I ended up getting. And no, I'm not going to sell it. This one's for me. I'm going to build it. Ha ha. <laughs> anyway, um, because I have the monster scenes and I kind of got off of that a long time ago. Uh, you know, the project. But I should get back to it. So Vampirella will be cool in there. Unfortunately, she's not molded in this really dynamic pose. She's kind of more... I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I have seen the kit and it is a little bit goofy, but hey, it's part of the scene. So yeah, here's some of the other bits. I have all these. The Frankenstein on the little thing. And, and then I've got some of the Marx figures as well, which are the same scale. But yeah, overall, Vampirella is cool. There's a giant insect and Dr. Deadly down here. So again, I've got some of these videos of these guys on the Monster Hobbies Monster Model Dungeon YouTube channel. So check that out sometime. Now getting back to the cars, I picked up this 1961 Pontiac Catalina. John was a big Pontiac fan, so there's a lot of Pontiac things in there. Even some rare like Johan Pontiacs. I was debating getting them, but I didn't really know how much the family wanted for those because they're expensive and I only had a limited budget so I wanted to stretch out as much as I could instead of going there and getting two models and that was it. So again a Mobius kit. I do carry Mobius kits in the store. I think I have one of these online right now but I wanted to do a what's in a box and build one for myself just because it's not a Chev. AMT has the uh, 62 Chevy and uh, Lindbergh has a 61, which is also EMT now. But Pontiac's a little di more difficult to get. Thankfully, Mobius makes it, so I want to add it to my collection. Now, this was another kit that I picked up. And I picked it up because my good friend Pete actually recommended this a while ago, that if I found one of these to get it. Now, my friend John actually did have the full garage and tool set. And it was like that thick and really heavy. And I was going to get that one first, but then I thought, well, what's the point? Because with the garage, you're just basically getting this, which, I mean, we can make a better one out of styrofoam, right? Especially if I want to do a huge garage diorama. So I figured, uh, based on Pete's video, that I would get the tools instead. And like he was saying, I mean, there's a million tools in this thing. So if you ever want to see this... Well, I'll do an unboxing later. But if you want to see the unboxing now, check out his channel. And look at all that. Just massive amounts of coolness. I'm sure Nady will like this for Nady's Garage. There's even decals down there and some wires and stuff. So yeah, check it out on Pete's channel. I'm sure he'd love to show that to you. <laughs> It's all pre-recorded anyway. But yeah, so there is another one of these cool models that I picked up. Now here's another cool thing that was over at John's place that I picked up. And uh, you may not really know what this is just by looking at this. I mean, there's a lot of weird parts in this. And the cellophane, it's very thin, so I didn't want to try to put pressure on it to get the dust off it. But if we turn it over and turn it this way, these are the drag strip accessories. And here you have the vintage television camera from the 50s, early 60s, with the four lenses on the turret. And if they wanted to uh, change the lens, they would just rotate that ring and it would get a different lens on there. Again, really cool stuff. And then down below, we have the lane lights for your pits, as well as the loudspeaker and stand, the starter's flag, a two-piece broom and a two-piece fire extinguisher. So again, this was a really cool thing that I saw just sitting on the table and I bought it. Getting back to cars, this is another one that I wanted back in the day. Um, they had it available at a hobby shop, but when I went to buy it, it was gone. So I'm glad I found it. But there is a little bit of an issue with it. So this is a USA Oldies 1960 DeSoto Adventurer from Johan. And uh, there's the parts to it. And here it is upside down underneath. And there's a Sharpie written, as is, not sure if complete. 
Luckily they wrapped the glass in a piece of tissue. Kind of hard to see. But somebody had painted it metallic blue and they never turned the model upside down when they painted it. So there's overspray up in the fender wells and everything. So I'm going to have to see what this looks like and hope it's all there. But uh, it was... John got it from trains and such for $10. So fingers crossed everything's there and this is going to be an all right kit. This was another really cool model kit that I ended up getting. And the reason why I got this one is because way back in the day, in the 80s, when I was young, I had this one and the Roadster in the Jumping Jeans series. And I got this in a um, pharmacy back in Horseshoe Bay that no longer exists. And I got both of those kits there and it was really cool. So when I saw this, I had to get it. Next up in this collection, I got a bunch of these model car science magazines from the 60s. This one's from July 1967. Check out this uh, paint job here on the Monkey Mobile. It really is uh, flowery. It's all these vines. It must have taken forever to paint that. Probably by hand too. Some wild ideas for custom paint jobs inside. Now I think these magazines are a little bit micro moldy. I'm not sure. They do smell a bit musty. Okay. There's a bunch of cartoons in here. <laughs> Slot car racing ones. Piranha model kit. I just want to see what they got for those. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. A little coffin show rod skeleton there beside the AMT Ford Fastback. Oh, here's the uh, Don Eamon's Detail for Real. Mo um, mod, Fog, Web, and Flame. Wild ideas for the ultimate exteriors. So flames, of course. Here's how they painted the um, vines on the car. Here's a cobweb idea. Interesting. Wonder what they're doing with this down there with the uh, few or predicta with the top. <clears throat> but anyway, a lot of neat stuff in these model car magazines. Okay. Oh, turning a AMT kit into a slot car. It's a, looks like the 65 Ford. Cool. Check that out. <laughs> Whoops. Hang on. Yeah, look at that. There's the, uh, what is that? The George Barris surf wagon. And then uh, the 32, or sorry, 29 Ford uh, pickup truck with the surfboards in it. Make your own slot race track for 10 bucks. Oh yeah, this one got water damage. You can feel it. There's how to build the slotting surf wagon. I bet when it rolled over, though, your uh, <laughs> your surfboards would snap all to pieces. <clears throat> it's the sad part about the slot car is if they ever go flying off the track, everything on there is busted. This is interesting. Make your own slot car tracks. Styling tips. <laughs> Scratch built models from real life. It's all these funny little... Look at this thing. <laughs> Strange ideas. See, I wish they still made model magazines like these. <clears throat> sort of the sad part about the internet. Yeah, you can see everything that people are doing, but... I mean, there's some neat stuff in here. Look at that front end. That's a Mercury. Never seen uh, anybody do anything like that on the Merc. Oh, real pictures of the surf, Woody. Yeah, 
So there's that AMT 53 Ford again. Oh, no, 56. 56 Ford pickup truck from uh, Ravel or Monogram. One of the two. What's going on there? James Bond ejector seat. <laughs> what is this? Oh, yeah, it is. Aston Martin for 007. It shows you all the um, the details the car had. The bulletproof windshield and all that stuff. That's cool. Da -da -da -da. I know uh, Monogram re-released that kit. Maybe I can pick one up. Look at all these. Imagine, imagine. Imagine. Imagination can win a 65 Corvair for you. The third annual Ravel Testers Custom Car Contest. Oh, that's neat. Okay. <clears throat> then next we got this Model Cars Illustrated. This one's in a comic book bag, which is nice. Magazine bag, actually. Look at the Duesenberg and all that. I guess these are 25th scale kits, because I know the Duesenberg was. Modify a metal kit. There's the Predicta. When, we're, when uh, they included all the little rods everywhere. Look at that racetrack. I could make that for my slot cars. Look at this square 90 degree. <laughs> right in there. Look at this Volkswagen with the Sierra Sandblaster thing. Let's see. Ooh, blueprints for a Porsche. Real car or model? You decide. It's actually a model. <laughs> kind of spoils it. They should have had this, that on the one page, and then when you open it up, it was a model. Not on the same page. Look at all this stuff. MCI designs a show go rod. Look at the all the rails in this thing. It's for a dragster. <clears throat> Slot car dragster. Dudley Dudley's mag magster. Oh, look at that little teeny thing. It's kind of got a pacer rear window on the back. <laughs> oh, some real cars, new and hot for 65. <clears throat> Ooh, outline drawing side elevation. That's cool. AMT's 1950 Ford, 49 Ford. Sorry, it's the same. Anyway, there's a uh, the monogram Duesenberg. I actually have a junked up one like this. Too bad I couldn't rebuild it and make it a slot car. Racing kits from Monogram. Oh, it was an actual kit back in the day. That's cool, because I don't have the slot car kit. Oh, make your own wire wheels. But it looks like he's just painting them on or something. Well, maybe not. Yeah, how to make wire wheels. Boy, I could use this for um, uh, some of the Model T kits I have. The wheel popped out, and so that's how you do it, eh? Make a drum. Oh, cool, I'm glad I picked this one up. <laughs> well, that might be a future video. How to make wire wheels. Okay, I'll put this back in the bag. Model Car and Track Magazine from February 66. Ooh, this one's soggy. I don't know, I hate to throw something out like that, but I might have to throw something out like that. <laughs> it's too bad. I'm, I had some other... Um, what the hell? America Eliminates the Thumb from Tom Thumb. Anyway, I had some other magazines that got wet because a uh, water tap down in the basement here was open for a split second and shot a whole bunch of water out right onto oh, look at that drawing right onto a box of car magazines I got from John 
<laughs> it's with John and water here. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, they they sat in the box for a little while and they all got musty and moldy. <clears throat> Neat stuff. All this slot car stuff. HO scale too. All right. Yeah, this is the... See, it even looks green down at the bottom. Yeah, see? Carve your own wooden body. Cool stuff. <clears throat> okay. Another one. <laughs> Look at these people. So intent on racing. All right. Some of the jokes. Jokes and whatnot. Blueprints for your vintage F1s. And then we got model car model here. We got all the Model T's down below. Again, neat stuff. Ed Roth, when he was young. <laughs> and when he was still with Ravel. Oh, look at these drawings, sketches. I think those were uh, reader's art. What is it? Canada West, Northwest. Racing coast to coast. Lots of interesting slot car things. Look at this control panel thing. This fine control board, designed by owner Bob Goldman, clocks the races to one one hundredth of a second. Neat. Yeah. <clears throat> Visit Grand Prix Race Race Wave Wave. Visit Grand Prix Raceways St. Louis. You can imagine this that's not around anymore, unless some of you are still in St. Louis and can tell me otherwise. Look at the back window. That's a pacer right there. What year is this? 65. They wouldn't have even known what a pacer was. And yet there's the rear back glass and and roll panel. <laughs> It's interesting. Those tea buckets are cool. Beautiful TNT. But yeah, like it. Like it a lot. <clears throat> All these great big slot car tracks. That's what I want to build if I get, uh, get that opportunity again. What is going on here? The Tourster in its final stages. The top was fitted for from a Johan 31 Caddy Sport Feet. Are they all changing up a Duesenberg for this big body style from the Cadillac? So what's going on? Can you tell me? <laughs> Building the Durham Tourist Tourster. Yeah, I guess that's what they're doing. Yeah, this is the kit that I have here that's like all busted up in parts. Ooh, look at all these sketches. Oh, look at that. Trunk treatment, headliners. Fine points about upholstering interiors. Nice. Yeah, there was a model in John's collection up there that actually had corduroy in it. Any of you guys remember doing that? Here's some more car model magazines with no covers. Ooh, setting up your uh, uh, controllers and things back in the day for slot car racing. Ooh, look at this. Clay molds. Students making a car with clay molds. but they're all musty. Ah. <laughs> oh, that'll work my uh, sinuses. 
Oh, Johan's uh, turbine car down there. Right there. <laughs> Try your stuff with a with a tough turbine. Warning, if you can't handle detail, stay away from this one. I've got two of these kits. Are they going to tell me how to build it? That's great. Because I've been afraid of this kit because everything opens in it and wheels steer and a whole bunch of jazz. Oh, look at this. This is the uh, that GM Fisher Champion Champs announced for 65. That's cool. You always see the, the thing. Too bad this wasn't in color though. Cool. I wish you would do this stuff again. Just like the way the world is. Oh, I guess they would do a design contest. All the kids would enter with their cell phones and do the thing in, um, you know. Well, it, I guess not Photoshop. Maybe they'd even get the AI to do it. So there goes the contest, eh? I'm looking for a model building collaborator who's not clumsy with X-Acto knives. And there's his hands all cut up. That's silly cartoon. Well, what are we building here? Showcase? Work case for small spaces. Oh, there it is. No, I don't know. I don't know if that was it on the back there. <clears throat> H.O. Aurora AFX. Remember those? Who had one? Comment section. Motorcycles. Oh, the Datsun. All these cars. Anything ultra cool in here? Just regular cool. Okay. <laughs> Model car science. HP Hobby People car sale. HP high performance motorcycle with the sidecar right there. <clears throat> moon scope, moon buggy, trip target Porsche. Oh, what's going on here? Speed probe. Model of the month, slot car stuff. Model car illustrated. What are we doing here? Building a track. Model builder, first class. Yeah, build out houses for your slot car set. <laughs> Seven more ideas for track realism. Bleachers, walls. Outhouses. Look at all this stuff. How to make embanked corners. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that thing. Rambler. Start off as an AMC Rambler. 61 Rambler, yeah. Mike chopped, channeled, and sectioned the body. He used a 57 T-Bird undercarriage to which he added a few goodies of details such as brake lines, emergency cables, blah, blah. Interesting. Oh yeah, there's the uh, Mercedes. I inherited one of these from my dad. <clears throat> See, I want to put those in the museum when I build one. If anybody wants to help uh, support some of that, I do take donations. <laughs> yeah, cool stuff. <clears throat> There's the uh, big deuce kit. Ooh, light up your custom. I wanted to know how to do that. Look at the actual bulbs head. I've got some model train ones. Can you sink them in bezels? The only issue with this stuff is, if you burn out a bulb, how do you get it all apart again? But anyway, look at that 61 T-Bird. Now you can do this with the 62. From AMT. 
Okay, then I've got this one. This is from 75. A little more modern. But yeah. More color in there. AMT 44, but they chopped the top on it. Put a convertible up, which is okay. I will accept it. <laughs> start a club. How to start a model club. I should do that. All right, let's look at some more models. Here's another kit that I added to the collection. Now, um, I do have one of these, but I did work on it, and it was a second-hand one that somebody had started before, and they glued the figures together. But instead of getting the front and back half perfect like this, they're like this. So it's, yeah, the figures are kind of ruined in the other one. And I can't do a what's in the box of the other one, but I can for this one because everything here is still in its original bag and the uh, awful two-piece body is there as well. But uh, yeah, this should be a good one to take a look at.